Frank. Frank, mind it, man. Can I Be Frank is all about capturing real, authentic, unedited conversation. And we had ran, yeah, we had uh, the gospel book. For, uh, for five years, but we finished. We finished the two days when I was four and five years, and we finished the four days. Three years after that. We have this. We have this symposium as well through the edge, so mm. that's almost like another one. So. Yeah. So. And I suppose what I wanted to understand is, you know, when you were saying that you you go into the competition next door to av to avoid mm. watching everything, and how um, how do you get over that? That idea, that because I imagine owning a Michelin star restaurant oh, and owning two others on top of that, the idea of letting go, because I mean the Michelin star is only as good as you know your last meal, Absolutely. almost. But now I know all restaurants are kind of like that, only as good as your last meal. But yeah. to this level, you know, you, you kind of. I was looking. There's only three thousand. Um, no, there's two thousand seven hundred odd Michelin stars in the whole world. Mm. So you're in a finite yeah, yeah, number yeah. of people, and it's reviewed every every year. So yeah, yeah so. So as you, you can say you're only as good as your last meal or your last inspector's meal and if something, if something were to go wrong and you were to lose your star, unfortunately, mm. the, um, the, way, the way the business is or the nature of the, the media, and that, like, I mean, it would severely affect the restaurant. It mm. would actually, I mean, you could argue that it would finish the restaurant. Mm. I mean, if you um, look what happened in Thornton's, um, like, it, like, and it is an unfortunate. It's not. It's not like it's Michelin's fault, um, um, but it is just something that it's almost like getting debarred if you were if you were a solicitor. Yeah. Do you know? I mean, you, you, even if the food is exactly the same after, mm -hmm. you um, you kind of lose that international credibility. So yeah, mm -hmm. no, it is. I mean, in relation to switching off, it is um, it is hard, and I suppose I I don't have. Um, uh, I'm not very talented at switching off, so yeah. um, I uh, I kind of usually find more things to do as opposed to find less things to do. Um, yeah. I mean, with the re as along with the restaurants and um, uh, and the symposium, I'm uh, writing a book as well at the moment on on, on Irish food, and and that's not, uh, it's not due until 2000, January 2019 anyway, so I have a year to write it, but. Um, that's what I was doing over in the in the competition, <laughs> writing the book. Right. Uh, so yeah, like I mean, uh, I suppose for me the at this stage, it's it's trying to become a better um, a better a better delegator, you know, mm. and and that's probably something I'm, that I wasn't very good at because you kind of come into the restaurant industry as a um, um, as a chef, and then you. Um, you don't, I suppose, ne necessarily have this kind of um, a box of skills that you don't like. You don't train to become a manager or yeah. train to become a business person or like you just kind of you're you're. A, I was a, I was a cook or a chef, and then I said, "Oh, I'd love to have a restaurant." And you open that restaurant, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you have staff, and then you have yeah. like administration to do, and then you have like uh, the advertising and PR to do, yeah. and then and as it grows and as uh, as things come in and awards come in and Michelin come in it, it becomes more and more international and, and I suppose you start to um, um, you start to be um, seen from many many different sides mm -hmm. so yeah it is it is um, it is difficult uh, to uh, to balance it all but like we have we have a good team in in, in, in all the restaurants at the moment and I suppose it's uh, it's um, <coughs> I suppose it's something you just do every day, you know. There's never, mm -hmm. there's never a dull day, unfortunately. So you see, I suppose it is this idea of control. I mean, it's not even that maybe control, but say so you have a vision of for the place, or you have a vision for how a place should look. Now you either, if you're the type that, you, and I think you know, like over there it says born mad. Mm. Either you're the type of person that's that's going to say, 
you know what, I've not quite hit my vision there, for what, but I'm just going to let it go, it's fine. Either you're that type of person or it's fucking almost near death if I let that go out there and I'm not 100% happy with it. Is, yeah. is it like that in everything? No, that's the, yeah, of course, that's the balance. And I suppose yeah. you, you, have to, um, you have to, I suppose, find a, a medium between the two of them mm. to, to continue. Yeah. Because otherwise, I mean, there's only one of me and there's yeah. three restaurants and a symposium. So, like, um, you have to try and learn to the skill of delegation and almost the skill of of um of uh saying i'm like i can't do that now and i'm gonna have to accept some sort of compromise because i'm not doing it and if it's not done the way i want it to be done uh, and i'm not there but it's still good i mean at what point do i not intervene because if i intervene yeah. over everything then and drive them insane and kill and, the confidence and, and, and also and also and, and also um um, I suppose it, uh, I won't be able to get anything done. So mm. it is. It, it, I, I, I'm certainly getting better at, at stepping away um, a little bit and saying, okay, that's all great, and and, and trying to see the whole um, the whole picture, the whole vision. And yeah. um, um, but, but it obviously is, you must be getting good at that. Given I can't think of his name, but one of your guys um, got an award recently in. Oh, England. Killian, yeah, Killian, yeah, Killian, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that obviously comes from. Well, now I don't know his history, but he, I mean, he's come from here. So if you were totally a fucking nut job, none of your staff would come out and do well. No, like, no, know. and we really try and um, we really try and nurture mm. um, talent. And like Killian is, okay, sorry, turn it off. Killian is a really, uh, one, Killian is a really talented chef, and. Um, um, the typical um, trying to turn this off. Uh, Killian's a really talented chef, and I always said to him, like, I mean, I don't really need to teach you too much about cooking. Mm. Uh, I need to teach you how to. I need to mould you as a as a person to do well in the industry. Mm. And um, and I suppose that's what really these competitions, the Euro, the Euro Talk Young Chef, and the and this one there, uh, the San Pellegrino Young Chef, like I said to him, you need to enter these things. So just, a, you're good, and B, I judged it last year, and I said I think you're 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 you're, you're certainly you you, um, you you can do it. And so for me, it's just trying to put all those things in place and to give him confidence and mm -hmm. to practice uh, performing it. Yeah. It's not so much the cooking for me. Like he he can cook. It's practicing that kind of performance. So when you're in front of a jury or you're in front of presenting your dish. Um, and so yeah, for me, like it, it's for me, it's very important to like not to be a nut job in the kitchen. And yeah. the kitchen has a has a long history of of, uh, of nut jobs and uh, and, yeah. and and screaming and uh, and I suppose putting people down and, and and there's still loads of it there. But I mean, I, like I really think that if you if you can't run your kitchen in a in a reasonable way or your business, then like there's something wrong with you yeah. because I, because I should be able to. Uh, either be in service or sit back either way and everything should uh, should um, uh, should line up mm. and if, if things aren't lining up then I need to intervene and say look we're not going to do that or this is not the way we're going to act or because it has happened and I and, I, and I've worked through it and um, I've worked under people like that and it's just I find you get the the same result happens anyway I mean the customer gets fed yeah. if, if there's a mistake and I lose the plot uh, what is the what is the um, uh, what happens after that? Yeah. It's pretty much I've 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 learned now the same bloody thing. You know, yeah. I lose the plot. You give out to someone, you do the dish again. The customer gets fed. But do you do you find then that so um, say in identifying somebody to come and work? I mean, in terms of staff, you've, uh, from what I was reading, like you've done well as well with people that have been with you. Yes. I mean, so when I was running a business. So I would have been controlling at the start, and the control was wasn't that. Uh, in fact, I recruited better people than me. You know, they were yes. definitely better than me. But still, I needed to know that they felt the same way that I did, or felt that kind of. I don't want to say worry because that brings it stress, but that wanting to do well, mm. and it's either there, or it's not there in somebody's. So, uh, you know, that that kind of. If somebody comes in and the, the, you get the impression that it's done. You know that they. It's already over for them. They've learned everything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? How, so how do you spot somebody? Or how do you? I know do it's like very difficult in, in the west of Ireland. It's I suppose it's even harder than say than than in Dublin trying to get recruit staff. And mm. uh, sometimes it's just it's just pure luck. I mean, mm -hmm. Michelin helps a lot when you're looking for 
uh, looking for um, for people to, to join your team and also there's like this reputation I, I, I assume that when people leave here and they go off to work elsewhere well then they they, uh, they say oh it's a nice place to work I mean yeah. that's all I want anyone to ever um, to ever say I mean it's 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 a nice place to work and you learn a lot and it, there's there's a there's a sense of um, a sense of discipline about the place. Mm. I mean, I, I definitely agree with you that like for me, you're the it's um, <clears throat> it's it's very important that you hire or you always hire above yourself. You know yeah. that you um, if you I mean, I, and I think a lot of people, particularly small business owners, struggle with that because they need to be the most important person and they need to be the best, and so yeah. they don't want to challenge themselves. But for me, like I really need people in here. That are that are um, that are better than me at certain things yeah. because for me I'm trying to orchestrate something you know and the same if you're a conductor in an orchestra you don't need to be the best violin player you don't need to be the best fiddle player or whatever you need to get a really good violinist to, to fulfill what you see so it's probably trust then yeah it, it is I know yeah. it is trust and and it is difficult because I suppose you, when you hand over a lot of trust um, to uh, to someone then uh, you need to uh, that trust has to be balanced and it's and it's and it's I suppose it's more difficult today than ever because you have like social media channels and and so it's not like you just have one way of communicating with the restaurant to the outside mm -hmm. world that if you have a bunch of chefs in here um, and they're all successful sure they could be they can communicate with whoever they want yeah. and and, um, and and how to manage that is a, is, 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 is a very um, is a very new thing mm -hmm. you know it's not something that again that I'm used to or so like when you say like oh, well this person was uh, uh, contacted by the media or that person I mean how to intervene and how to balance that and we have a PR person and yeah. and I try and liaise with her and say like how do I deal with this you know like this uh, yeah. you almost need uh, for dealing with the press that is um, you do need media training almost oh no absolutely you know? because they literally I mean the media with the media you get the best and the worst you mm. get people who are interested journalists who are want to write a story about oh god I love the idea of an ear and what it's doing and then others that just want to I suppose use that idea to 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 make a story yeah. and and uh, and in that sense I mean and I, and I suppose I've um, I have been um, I've fallen into the trap before that if you just kind of naively assume everyone is nice and then you meet everyone you give them all your stories and then all yeah. of a sudden you go I didn't say that or that is not the like the the context for the for that I gave on that piece but I suppose you just you learn uh, after a while I mean what to say and what not to say and 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 you just try and be a little bit more careful about about um, well it's like the you know you see Michael Leary in action and he is epic no matter what way uh, the conversation uh, they try to take the conversation mm. he will bring them back to the three points that he wants to make yeah, and yeah. it's those repeated over and over again now that's different it doesn't do that it's always it's almost political yeah but you know what i mean but i suppose you need to become very, i suppose you need to become very clever and um and just uh, and uh, you can see why yeah i mean whether it's michael area or politicians why it, 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 it's it's increasingly difficult to speak because yeah. i mean things said in one context put into another context uh, sound completely different you know yeah. and i uh, find that almost intolerable though even in in anything um, like uh, I uh, we won't go into it too much but I mean you put something like on your uh, Twitter fuck off right or whatever it was to the people who who didn't turn up yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. It's, not, it's not even a thing and suddenly I read that yesterday and I thought I thought fair fucks yeah yeah you know and I'm sure you got a lot of that and then there's other people who will say how dare you use the f word yeah. you know what I mean no no that and and, and that's yeah, and then you get I suppose but it's it's to extreme extents now I think where people are really what especially in the mainstream media people will almost live and die by a couple of sentences yeah. now. I yeah. find it... No, know. it's and I suppose it's even like when we, we closed for race week this week, uh, this year. Yeah. And, um, and I suppose for, it was a decision we, uh, we, we, we made just for this year and we said, look, we'll see how next year goes. But it was like, of course, 50% people agreed with us, 50% uh, actually thought it was intolerable and that it was a, like an elitist and that like I didn't care. Like, and like I didn't close all the restaurants, I just closed here and yeah. that I was anti Galway and all these, these stupid sentences. But I did have journalists ringing me and under the pretext of writing a piece about Galway yeah. and, and, and unfortunately I got caught out on one or two occasions where I just naively thought, oh yeah, and cool answer for things about Galway and yeah. then it was put into the context of closing the restaurant for a week yeah. and everything sounded wrong everything that I had said yeah. didn't was not in the context of me um, um, uh, about doing a piece about closing the restaurant so I suppose you, you have to um, 
you have to um well that's the thing though it, that's where I, so i don't edit anything um uh, but I think there is that thing where the two or three sentences, then one that that five words takes the headline, and then yes. it's repeated throughout the article, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's it. There's no. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I something you could say, uh, like something really innoxious that you could say in yeah. the middle of a of an interview. If that becomes the headline, it becomes the most important thing. Yeah, I love the headline that Frank McCoy said. People are assholes. Yeah, you know, that'd yeah, be a great yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, most uh, people. In fact, I can be an asshole, but. Um, um, I read, did I read? I used to be a postman, now I cook and write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I was actually a postman. I, uh, I suppose it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a joke and a little bit of, a, a little bit of uh, the truth. No, I did. I, when I finished school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I had, I had cooked a little bit uh, during my last couple of years in, in secondary school. And, and I, had, I was a postman for a year. And um, mm. I, I put it up there because I mean, so constantly when people see see me now and I'm a chef and I suppose I'm uh, from the outside I'm a successful chef and I have three restaurants and then they say they look at you and you go oh you're a chef and and so for but on the inside of me I still feel like I'm I suppose in pursuit of something yeah. and that's why I suppose I put up the, that that post saying that I used to be a postman how I cook and write. Just to 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 keep try, it humble. No. yeah, to keep it humble, absolutely, mm. and but and also and also to um, <coughs> to to try and show people that when they, they go, oh God, you have your life sorted, but yeah. you're, you've your life sorted now. You have three restaurants and you have two children and you have a house. I mean, I don't feel like it's any more sorted than anyone else's life, and yeah. so I think, look, I cook and I write, and uh, and that's what I do, and. Um, okay, we, we have what we have, but uh, it's uh, it came. I suppose for me, I came from very humble origins, and yeah. it's 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 where I want to stay. Even if I have ten restaurants, you know, it's not something. Uh, um, yeah, I was almost going to say to you when before this, I was going to say, um, I better just flick this. I was going to say, look, as an icebreaker, do you want to go and swim in the in the sea? Yeah, yeah. Because well, for me, I do that because it's the most humbling thing you can possibly yeah, do. Yeah. It's the most earthing thing. It's not that I need to be earthed or anything like that, but it does remind yeah. you. Oh no, and I, I do it occasionally. My brother does it every yeah. day. My brother does he? Jerry, yeah, he's he's a loon for it. Oh my god, he goes in the middle of November. And I don't know how he does it. Um, and he, he has a restaurant. Mm. Um, it's just, a fucking amazing. You should go in. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, in, in I don't I don't do it enough. And yeah. I think the last time I was in, we had a visiting chef over from Brooklyn, and we all. On the split on Saturday, we all went down, and um, it was good crack. Uh, five of us went in into the, that was uh, the end of October, and it was oh, it was Baltic. Um, yeah. It was cold, but I'll probably go in Christmas Day. But no, no, I mean for me, uh, like trying to stay grounded and trying to stay humble is probably the the most important thing, you know. Yeah. Because I mean, I do have a megalomaniac vision, and I know that. Yeah. Um, I know that I want to change things, and I know I want to. Uh, become the best but that's when do you think you'll have arrived though this guy no, that, I, I wrote I, the, the word you wrote the word or i read the word lack yeah. trying to fill this gap and when oh, i put the words gape and hole yeah <laughs> yeah 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 no and i do i do feel a, like a, a lack all the time and uh, yeah. uh there won't be any how are you there won't be any uh spanish yeah I, I can drop that over to them which it's Cava, it's over um, on Dom uh, Middle Street. Ah, sure. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah, I know, and I need to, I suppose I need to balance that. And uh, like, I suppose I do have a bit of a split personality in the sense that I want, you want to be humble and meek and then take over the world. And yeah. It's, it's a difficult thing to, uh, to, uh, to put together. When you uh, say that lack now, I was just curious about that idea that, because that me megalomania thing of trying to whatever, you know, on one hand, it's a, it's a lovely thing. On the other hand, it's insatiable. It's a, it's a, it's a, 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 do you think there is a place of arrival or a place where you can just go, oh, you know what, now I'll just take it easy? Or yeah, I don't know. I mean, I hope uh, maybe Sunday I'll find that. But um, That peace. <laughs> at the moment, yeah. I, do, it does, I don't see it coming. I suppose because I feel that there's so much to do, and particularly mm -hmm. in relation to food and... Um, uh, in Ireland and um, and 
through the various different channels, whether it's the restaurant, whether it's the writing, or whether it's the symposium, mm -hmm. of trying to of trying to change things. And for me, it's I mean maybe the the difficulty or the lack is there is that in that, is that my focus is the is the process. Mm -hmm. I suppose I'm not really focused. I'm not a results based person. Like when I when I do things like when we opened Tartar, I just felt all oh, right, great, it's open. Mm -hmm. I mean it's the it's the process of of opening it and putting everything together and putting the menu together and mm -hmm. getting all everything lined up and then it's and then and then saying oh great it's there and of course you have to manage it and you have to keep an eye on, it, on things and um, but for me the it's the process is the most important thing and um, and seeing the I suppose seeing the changes from that are, is, is a good thing but it's never really my um, um, I don't really, I'm not really goal orientated, you know. But is that the kind of, there's a guy called, I don't know if you've ever heard of a guy called Jordan Peterson, he's this, um, he talks about creativity and the arts and he talks about the creative mindset and the, um, the kind of, uh, we'd say the more logical working mind and he says, well, you know, the creative mind just needs to create, needs to bring that vision to life. But don't make them fucking run things. Don't yeah, don't get them yeah. stuck in my, the detail. My, my wife would absolutely concur with you. She would say like, "Would you stop creating things that other people have to run?" <laughs> <laughs> she would say, "Please, because I can't do any because because my wife runs the yeah. three businesses okay. and um, and uh, manages like our forty nine staff and um, and the symposium and and for me I'm looks I'm, I'm just constantly going okay we could do something else we could do something else we could do something else so, and so there is a yin yang thing there with um, with my wife and, uh, and, that's and probably and because you work I'm not saying you work I don't know if you work but that that is yeah. that yin and yang definitely and, helps yeah and it worked we work together we live together and with the kids together and so there is like there is and there is this like there's always a bit of difficulty and conflict because because I'm the one kind of pushing this way and she's pushing this way but there is I mean it, it, we we. We hold it together for better or worse, yeah. and um, uh, but it is like I, I mean I am not a money person. Mm. I am like do not even go near the money. I don't mm. generally don't know what things cost. Like I'm just like <laughs> uh, I'm like an accountant's nightmare yeah. um, because I just like going that is really good and let's put that together. And so she's the the one that grounds it and go like this. We let's not do this one. Let's do this one and let's let's pull it back. And and my staff are like that as well. They'll say like let's not get this or not get that product because that's really expensive or not selling it and let's balance it balance the things together and so um so it's all um uh, it is all about balance you know? i think it's fascinating though do you think uh, th that idea that i mean we're all the same or i mean blah, blah blah but there is that thing you can you might call it a lack or you might call it that that you're trying to fill or it's this it's the it's the, the creative mind so it's almost like he would th he talk about entrepreneurship being the same as artists it's the same type of mentality where somebody just is need has this compulsion almost to create and in little ways and in big ways and so when you describe the process so the process is 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 it is what you're looking for yeah yeah, yeah 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 no, no absolutely you could so. be running around everywhere trying to find things but really that's what you're looking for no it's, it's just the process a, it's just the process you know and it's like it's and but I suppose it's it's learning that as well because um, sometimes it's um, it's it it's it gets you get mixed up in, in everything and, and what I suppose the 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 media wants and what happens with the restaurant and like uh, yeah you it, you're always kind of in a mix of um, of confusion to a certain degree because you never know the outcome you know I mean mm. when we set up in there we didn't know what was going to happen and six years later. What we what we are now is something very very different that we what these what we set out to be, yeah. um, but it's it's a, it's a constant evolution. What did you set out to be? I suppose what we set out to I mean we set out to open a small restaurant that yeah. focused on Irish food, and yeah. then it became like a an international phenomenon uh, that won a Michelin star. So I suppose yeah. when we when we all sat down um, at the beginning, the um, the I did, we didn't have. Um, uh, those aspirations you know the aspirations it, isn't it a way that's the that's the creativity of it because I'm sure there's countless pe people out there saying I'm going to win that fucking Michelin star yeah, it's the last yeah. thing I and do it, and it never happens it yeah. never happens in pursuit yeah. of that whereas the innocence almost allows that innocent artistic kind of drive I think almost makes it more possible they're not caring about stuff like mm -hmm. that they're putting it out there almost and it's I would have thought then is it, it's harder to get back to that that kind of no, it is. It? For me, it's uh, it, it's it, it's something that you need to um, um, 
constantly do and that's what we're trying to do, I suppose do with tartar is, is like trying to get back to like what like what are we trying to do we're trying to give people really good food and give mm. people really nice wine and good coffee and and um, and like whatever else happens along that way I mean let it happen you know mm. and and maybe it's uh, post an year and ha- going through all of that f- all of that stuff and um, with media attention and national and international press that it's like just like for me just with tartar I just want to the people that come in and eat to be happy yeah if, if an award comes an award comes I don't really care if an award comes yeah. it's like it's not I didn't open it to get more awards mm-hmm. um, and um, not do you think you opened it to take well I'm not so uh, obviously uh, from what I've read a near like was well, not it's not a muddy it's not been no, a muddy exercise not, in any way shape, um, shape or form yeah but do you think there's a part of you that will say, um, well, over here I can take more risks and I can fulfill that, I can do more things or because uh, you don't want to risk here or, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, Is there I mean, a part they're, of that? They're, 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 they're certainly the like play, com- like. complimentary, you know, and, and, and CAB is the same. I mean, that they all work in balance with each other. I mean, because mm-hmm. again, here, is uh, an ear is like a labor of love, you know, yeah. and it's uh, an ear is like a little research project that you do when, um, when you get funding. Yeah. <laughs> so and uh, and Cab and uh, is is the one that funds that, and uh, and Tartar to a certain degree is, is to balance out an ear. It's uh, the ingredients are very um, very similar ingredients for like, s- s- the same producers, but it's it's a much more um, it's much more democratic. I mean, for me, an ear is is a very democratic space, but it's not perceived that way. It's mm. perceived to be like a Michelin star restaurant that you that is um, uh, fine dining to a certain degree. Uh, whereas we wa- I wanted a space uh, like Tartar where you can just pop in and have something similar that we have over here, is like say an oyster or Tartar or something else that uh, would, uh, would be representative of the experience that we offer here, but in much more informal settings. You could pop in. It's have, more playful. Yeah, almost. and have a glass of organic wine and have, a, and have, a, have, a, have some Tartar. Mm. And we do that here, but it, it's in much more uh, formal settings yeah, and okay. with much more staff and with much more precision yeah. but um, for me there has to be that kind of flow um, that kind of creative flow that um, um, that uh, that Tartar allows and, and, and yeah I can try a lot more things in Tartar that I can here because yeah. so if something goes on the menu here it has to be like it, it has to be um, exact and it has yeah. to be to the point and it has to balance with everything else and but I mean, I can, you, I can make mistakes over the roads, you know. I yeah. mean, someone could pop in and go, "I didn't really like that," and you go, oh, "Okay, I can change that." And I mean, you're not go- It's not going to uh, um, affect the the restaurant so much. And, and in a way, though, isn't that a, you know, with an ear as well, that it is that playfulness that we started with an ear as well. I imagine no. it is that we're going to just pursue our particular vision without any external influence or worry or you know anything at all yeah no I mean when we st- we, we had Cava next door when we started in there and my, my brother was front of house and um, and uh, um, our previous head chef was 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 in the was in the kitchen and uh, and the four of us with my wife I mean it was just a, a pursuit of like um, for me it was just like let's investigate Irish food yeah. and that was pretty much it and we, we kind of it was it was more of a we had more of a bistro feel and of course the food was really really good mm. and, but it was never a, like in my mind anyway it was there was never a kind of pursuit of of um, of Accolades. anything yeah, yeah like you know and um, I suppose I didn't I didn't come from that um, uh, from that background I mean I don't come from an award-winning ensemble you know I just came in to the industry because I love food and and that's what I continue Yourself to pursue. Thought, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I continue. I think that's fucking phenomenal. I love that. And and that's what I continue to pursue. That's mm. all. You know, you learn from others, you teach them, yeah. you keep going. And like as uh, if you have customers who are happy eating, then like that's that's all you need. And mm. if and if, if you get awards, you get awards. And but I, I just think that I suppose the the I've only learned that in retrospect, you know, because mm-hmm. when I started, it's great to be invited to award ceremonies and it's brilliant. And, and it's not to take away from them. They are really good and they, they, they do, they do uh, pl- uh, play a role. But unfortunately, they just become, the whole industry becomes just about the awards. Yeah. And then it's like when you have um, different, like the myriad of different lists all around the world and who's on them and who's not on them. and. Like uh, I think we just um, we lose focus of of, um, of what we're trying to do. Well, it becomes an awful lot of patting on the back as opposed to the artist. Yeah, and trees. then it becomes a lot about politics and 
uh, who came in to you for dinner and did they come in and they just but it's in saying all that now say you're all in the kitchen and somebody comes in uh, does it happen like this does somebody come in and go um, these could be the judges oh absolutely yeah and then you gotta you, I mean I think it's just do it's, you all gawk it's, it's, it's I'm just part, curious it's about part of, it's part and parcel of um, of, of the industry it's, it's like it's just something that happens and you you can't I, th- I think it would be stupid to deny it and yeah. go like I don't really care and yeah. I'm not the type of person that says no I don't care I, I suppose I'm just more of a person that says look it's not the most important thing in the world ever but of course if it we must add to the adrenaline oh the yeah if, if, we, comes in if, we, if, we, if we have if we have Michelin in or we have um, uh, anyone else in at Food and the Edge we had a lot of uh, top class chefs in and it does mm. add to um, um to, to the energy of yeah. it, yeah. But then for me, like I mean, I'm a weird one, and we had Paul Muldoon in, and um, Robbie, my my sous chef, was saying to me, I was more afraid of serving Paul Muldoon than I was the Michelin inspector, <laughs> because I was like, you are you, you're the real Paul Muldoon, and he was like, I am. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, you're a famous poet. So I mean, uh, it's, it's whoever you find, it's yeah. whoever you hold in reverence. Yeah, in, yeah. And, and and I think for me, well, I think that's lovely, though. Yeah, we had John Banville in as well, and and that, so it was very funny because the, the lads, no one knew who was talking. I was like, I was like John Banville. I, I, like, I, I don't know. I know. Yeah, Banville, yeah. Uh, Irish author, famous Irish okay. author, and um, I mean, he's like for me, he's like you have. Uh, Joyce Beckett Banville. Okay. <laughs> and um uh, seems just time to impress like a kid yeah, almost. And yeah. um he uh, so it's just yeah, so it's just nice to have people um uh to have people in like that and and, and um of course, I mean I love uh, the an ear is, is 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 very performative and it's very theatrical and mm. so for me I just love uh, presenting things and, yeah. and explaining them and talking about the process that we um of what we do and 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 taking people on a journey i suppose from, yeah. from when they come in and that's really what we try and um distinguish ourselves with with other i mean uh, uh michelin star restaurants right and like i i i always feel all we can add is our personality that's yeah. all i can add i mean food that's is, your difference yeah, yeah good food is good food and you can mm. go all over the world and you can have amazing food but mm. if there's no personality when that food then for me the, it, it, there's a lack you know mm. i mean i need to communicate myself yeah. in that food uh, or if my staff are here they need to, they need to, to follow through with that with that message say this is what we do mm. and, and we're, we're proud of it and and uh, and that's what shapes us I think it though it does come down to it again and uh, um, that the artist's way or the uh, the purity of that in the sense that um, uh, really you're given a piece of you you know if mm. it was once removed it wouldn't have the same emotive yes. feeling um, and if it was for the purpose of pleasing, whilst it is, it's it. But the, being pleased is almost an end result. So that somebody likes what you've done is the end result, as opposed to the goal. Is that yeah? Is yeah. that right? Or? No, 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 no. Definitely, I'd, I, I, I completely, I completely agree with you. And that goes back to trying to um, delegate more and trying to separate yourself out. That it's yeah. difficult because if you're not there, given the piece of you, you feel. I'm not doing enough. Mm. I'm just not doing enough. I'm yeah. not in the restaurant. I should be in the restaurant. I should be uh, everywhere. Like and it's and it's that constant uh, battle in Where your. Where was the last time you took a holiday? In your head. Um, oh, actually, we went on holidays in May. Actually, the, the good thing about kids is that they force you to go on holidays yeah. because you have to go. We went for a week in May, mm. and they they force you to go away. But yeah, really, if it wasn't for the wife and kids, I probably would just work all the time. Yeah. I mean, even I was in Finland last week, but I was working, and like I actually enjoy. I know it sounds a bit sadistic, but I enjoy going away to work somewhere. And mm. um, if you go away to cook somewhere, I love that because you you get out of your depth. You're back on the edge again. Don't yeah, you? and it forces you go into circumstances that you have no control over, mm. and then all of a sudden you have to do what you normally do. And I, and I think then you come back and then you you look on the place with fresh eyes, and you go, God, like I know this is uh, when you go back into your structure. Because I actually went to cook with a with a friend. Um, Sasu in Helsinki and he had come over to cook with us in um, in, in March mm. but I went over to cook with him and uh, he's got a little clot in his leg at the moment and he couldn't work so he worked two hours with me and then I had to, okay. had to run his kitchen well. and, he, and he left <laughs> so and, and Saturday lunch and dinner and I couldn't imagine just dropping someone in because you're only as good as your team just yeah. dropping someone in here and going you'll be grand the lads will take care of you but it was good but it's still um, it was um it was um, it, it pushed me uh, to uh, to be in an alien kitchen and and then have twenty customers. 
for six course menu and make sure not 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 just not that the food was right the food sometimes the food is the easiest thing to get right mm -hmm. it's to make sure that they get the food the way you want them to get it and then they enjoy that experience you know well, you're almost holding on to his vision for him and you just don't want to, to damage it yeah and we the thing that we the reason why we work so well together is that we've very similar sized restaurants and very similar size um uh uh, very similar philosophies, you know, mm. but he looks at Finnish food and the way I look at Irish food and so it was very easy for me just to go Oh, yeah, I understand why you're doing that. If you drop me in the middle of a French restaurant, I would probably be completely lost yeah. uh, But we've uh, a very personal approach as well. He goes down and talks to the table and and uh, and um, uh, And communicates stuff so it, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't as bad, but it was still it was still a push like to um, to uh, to go into another another environment, but mm -hmm. I mean, I like it's something I enjoy doing, and it's uh, I think you uh, you um, you learn a lot about not only yourself but also your own ability and how you create things in the process of uh, of mm -hmm. um, of creation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um, so. I was just checking the the time there that it didn't. Um, I have to flick it every um, oh, thirty okay. minutes or it'll cut out on me. Um, yeah, I, you see, I think that is the, you see, it, it, I, I think because of the creative mindset, it, it just so happens that you're in cooking, but it, it, that creative mindset could be that, that whatever that thing is that drives cooking happens to be the, the, the expression of yeah, it. Yeah, the medium, no, yeah. absolutely. And I'd like, I mean, I love, um, I love writing and I, I think I would, I would um, be just as happy. Um, um, sitting at a desk all day and writing. Isn't Solitary it? though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And maybe if I was there, I'd probably say I'm not happy. I need to be out yeah. there. So and you'd be, you know, you have, there's something about, well, I have written a book and to me, I couldn't write a second simply because of the, it's fiction. Yeah. Because of that, um, the opportunity to criticise in my brain, just from me and my brain, and to be left alone for that length of time, I yeah. just find it too... Um, yeah, no, it is, it is... Um, too much. Yeah, it is um, exhausting. And um, I suppose that's that's one good thing about about um, combining, I mean, because I, I, mean, I love writing and I write kind of fiction myself and I write plays and, and different stuff, all just like um, for my own um, self, but it's good to, uh, to have a, a met or have a, um, an avenue of release for that writing. So mm. when you write about food, for me, it's a lot easier because it has a kind of more of a shape on it and it has a, a kind of um, it's more process orientated if I have to write a column every there's times and it's on this vegetable that vegetable and I have 350 words it's very like there you go send it done yeah. and it's still and it still fulfills um, certain a, a certain brain. part of creativity yeah. it doesn't like give me the same I suppose pleasure experience that when you just create something mm -hmm. but even writing the the, um, the Irish food cookbook is um, is still it's a mixture of history and uh, imagination and recipes and um, tradition and like so th there's a lot of stuff mixed up together yeah. that I can put into it because it's not like a, it's a it's a recipe book it's not an academic treat treatise so I don't need to prove something and mm. of, as long as long as long as I'm uh, um, in some way correct because like I mean I, I have a very academic mind as well um, I don't need to footnote everything you know because it's it's not it's not going into that area so mm. th th there's a there's more um, a bit more of a, an imaginative experience that you can have with the text and like what were people eating when they first came to Ireland like 10,000 years ago of course no one can prove that and mm. you have to kind of look at kind of archaeological stuff and then and then create recipes from that mm. and whether or not you get a food historian that tells you you're wrong it doesn't really matter because like that's not my point my point is not to prove my point is just to uh, as an imaginative exercise to see well what, what were like the farming communities 5,000 years ago what were they eating and they had pigs and they had this and Who's to say they didn't? Um, they didn't do this, or, and so it's just about creating recipes based on that kind of imagination, you know. It's funny, and totally like um, I interviewed um, a guy who he does traditional Irish healing through Irish herbs, and so from nettles to, and uh, he's researched for seven or eight years, and he goes out, and he, you know the way you have things like goji beans, for yeah, example, yeah, yeah, and we yeah. all go goji berries. Oh, they're amazing because you know we've read it somewhere. And he said, but there's countless things like that that are out in the wild that are free. And in Ireland, as we would have used all those years ago, and we, we never 
because they can't be marketed and because no yeah, money can yeah, be made yeah. from them. They don't mean, you yeah, know, they're and not, I, and I've come across a similar, uh, similar um, things and because one of the parts of the book is on wild food and, and I, I'm, only, and I'm only just coming across it every so often, but like wild food as a medicine and as like folk medicine and this helps rheumatism, this helps uh, coughs, this helps. All of that stuff is there and it's not marketed anymore of co- and not used anymore because of course we have modern drugs and you go down to the chemist and you buy what you need. But talking to some of the foragers like who, um, who still continue that and make these little tinctures and these little shrubs and this yeah, one is for yeah, yeah this that, one yeah. It, this one is for if you have a cold and because it's made of rose hips and rose hips are full of vitamin C and yeah. this one is good if you have like p- uh, pains in your joints and mm-hmm. I mean for me that's still really useful information that that we need to um, uh, keep in the contemporary mindset yeah you know? it's not lost things can be lost no like, ever easily it so it comes down to nourishment as well isn't it yeah. yeah no absolutely and easily so and I, I think each each um, generate it's, it's important for each generation to to um, I suppose to assess the stuff of previous generations and then put it into a new format mm. so that that generation can understand it and it's not so much as just kind of like getting the recipes and then just showing them because uh, to a new audience really you have to uh, tailor them and rewrite them and uh, represent them so that uh, this generation will recognize it you know mm. I mean I, I was looking at um, recipe books from the uh, early 1700s and um, and they're really great handwritten recipes and but like uh, to for me I'm trying to take the um, the the essence of that out and say mm. uh, the essence of that product and put it into a contemporary format so a we can say oh that's really nice that, that that's based on an old recipe but we can still make it now rather than and maybe it would have been more spiced or more acidic because they had no fridges or they had to like had to mask certain flavors and for me uh, you need to try and strip that away and say well what, what were they trying to do I mean okay mm-hmm. one particular recipe they're trying to preserve oysters and well, well how would we preserve it nowadays to our palate mm-hmm. and and what would that taste like and so we're, we're so we're we're keeping with the tradition but at the same time we're innovating it slightly so then the next generation can go god I, like when you when you think about Irish food I mean what do you think about and mm-hmm. and for me that's that's the the burning question is that how do we how do I redefine Irish food for for another generation so that when the generation after me uh, says, "No, Irish food is more than the sum of lamb stew and potatoes." Because this well, is about yeah, that's what, in a way, that and that that's come out of. Well, that's where you're at. In, in what I've read, that kind of that passion. Um, I kind of I find it. You know, so I grew up, and my mother used to burn the carrots. I could smell oh, sh- the carrots yeah. on the way down like the driveway. Used to huh? burn, my granny used to burn the sausages, but I used to burn, I, burn them so sausages. much in, in aluminium. Okay. And then, and then you when you eat them, you could taste and the beans. Everything you can, you can taste, taste the crust. But I'm telling you, burnt carrots though. Uh, you, you probably haven't. No, burnt a I carrot. haven't. That's hard. Burn a carrot. It's yeah. just the most disgusting thing. And she used to just say, "Do you know what? It's grand, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you could yeah. smell it's it coming grand. down the driveway. But I suppose, like in your family, where did the, did it, it come out of? There's a few of you who were yeah, involved in the restaurants, industry, but I, I really don't know. I mean, because my father's a scientist and. Okay. Um, I have no idea why. Um, but there was there good food cooked at home? No, not not not, no, not, not particularly so. I mean, my mum could cook and bake, but I mean, not like in the same as every other household. And um, like I interviewed a, a jockey yesterday, right? So bear, he said to me the last thing on the planet he wanted to do was getting a horse. The yeah. la- he's retired now, but the last thing he wanted to do was getting a horse. And then he was, went out one Saturday, got up and one went, holy fuck. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. Is there a moment for you? Yeah. No, like it's it's hard to think back. I mean, or to be precise, and uh, and it, and 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 because I'm creative, that it's hard yeah. sometimes to, to think of like, am I just imagining that? I mean, or or was that a point where I said, I mean, I did home economics in school because I had asthma, mm. and there was woodwork or home economics, so I just had to do home economics, yeah. and I started to cook. But am I saying like, if I say, oh yeah, that's the point? Yeah. Uh, or when I was 15, I went to work in an Italian restaurant and making bread for the first time, making pizza and pasta. And, like, is that the point? Like, but it, it's somewhere it's around. It's, but I, you know what it is? Just um, what I think it is. And um, I was talking to. Um, let's see, what, what's that? 26. Just give me. A f- I was talking to. Um, do you know Dennis McKenna? Do you no. Know, do you know Terence McKenna? Terence McKenna is a real psychedelic. He's Terence McKenna. Oh, I do know. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So his brother wrote a book on Joyce. A really weird one because I came across it and I read it and it was mm-hmm. more. It's on Finnegan's Wake, but it was more about mushrooms and 
Yeah, uh, well, there is a huge amount of that. It would be a great conversation to have with you. So, I, like, I've got into that whole area because I just think the, the psychedelic research that's going on now is phenomenal, yeah. especially the mushroom. If you're, if you're into fungi at all, you should go and listen to a guy called Paul Stamets, if you haven't. Oh, yeah. He genuinely will blow your brain. Wow. He knows so much about mycology and fungi. Yeah, well, yeah. well, it blew my brains. But uh, talking to Dennis McKenna, who's the brother of Terence, um, looking at everything about his life, was, uh, uh, the word was uh, curiosity. And I said, you were lucky enough, it seems to me, to be able to follow your curiosity. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, it was never about the money. You can see, see in the book, it's not about the money that he'd written. Or, you know, that when he went to the Amazon to look into all these mad psychedelics, but it was curiosity. Mm. And that curiosity brings you down pathways that you, you probably would never go down. I, do you think it was yeah, that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I, th I think so. Um, and, that, and that's why, in the sense that um, the, the creativity could be served through another medium, mm -hmm. um, if, if it hadn't been that. I mean, I love photography and I love um, uh, many other artistic forms. And I suppose this is just the one that that worked in terms of a job and, and, and so many other things and, and all the other ones circle around that. Um, but yeah, it could have, it could have possibly been, uh, been, a, been another way. Yeah, well science is curiosity too. And that, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be curious to want to be a scientist. Yeah, really no, yeah, and, and I, I mean that's, I suppose it does, uh, those crazy experiments my father would do at home with physics and shows things and I still remember some of them just with balls rolling up hills and had the, because depending on the angle and all these stupid things um, uh, that defy your expectation. Yeah, all I, I think I just had a, I suppose a, um, a curious mind, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have a couple of things that are probably more structured. They won't take too long. And, and um, so I just checked it. Uh, a couple of things was um, do 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 do. Um, how do you respond to um, somebody going on to TripAdvisor and going? Oh, like well, criticism. Yeah. How do you respond to criticism in general? Sometimes well and sometimes badly. I mean, I don't, I don't read TripAdvisor anymore. Yeah. I don't look at it at all. Um, purely for the fact, probably it's because it's anonymous. Because um, it's, um, it's, it's you. It's in my experience, it's, it's, it's slightly, it's slightly aggressive because generally it's people go on to make a point and. Um, Sound good, yeah. Yeah, and um, and to and to be, and to become a journalist for the day, and and I used to respond to some of them and get really irate, and they'd ruin your day. You'd get the the fucking um, um, the notification in the morning. You'd read it and you go like, "What a prick!" Like, yeah. and then so you'd respond to him in a, "You are a prick," mm -hmm. and then yeah, he'd respond to you and go, "You're a prick." Uh, and then, no end then. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. so then I just had to just stop yeah. and just say, "Look, all I can do." Um, um, or all we can do in the restaurants and if I'm here all I can do is try and ensure that someone has a good time okay. and, it, and if they if they don't have a good time then I try and make sure that I know they haven't had a good time before they leave so yeah. I can try and modify it yeah. um, and, and, and that doesn't always happen but by and large I find um, when someone um, offers criticism particularly through Facebook or, or Twitter um, because there's a there's a connection there with, with a person um, and a, a face generally that they're they're generally less pointed so like not always but I'd say 90% of the time yeah. if we get some a message on on Facebook that says I came in and I didn't really like that or I wasn't happy with that I, I find you can engage with that and you go yeah. oh I'm really sorry yeah. but when but TripAdvisor is just like like headline worst meal of my life ever yeah. do never go into this establishment yeah, and, and there's a picture of a dog on the profile yeah they can yeah. hide all yeah the, and it's and, yeah. and then you just look through it and you go like literally it's just kind of like a wannabe kind of like a tabloid journalism yeah. that's that that, that that takes that, that takes a lot of it and I know like there's a lot of uh, positivity and good things about TripAdvisor but like that and Yelp I never yeah. look. At, I never look at it at all. I mean, there's enough. There's enough things to uh, to be looking at, and it's hard enough to uh, to pay attention to um, the the customer when they're in mm. without having to think about like, um, yeah. are, are these going to give me a bad trip advisor? It was like, I don't care. I mean, if I need to throw someone out of the restaurant, I will. Um, <laughs> because uh, like, it's it's. Uh, I mean, that's just the difficulty. I think sometimes is that we don't have 
the the confidence and we have to accept that like if someone comes into the restaurant they're a guest and yeah. they need to be treated as a guest yeah. but if they don't act like a but guest vice versa, yeah, yeah. They are a guest and, and it's well. and it's on very rare occasions yeah. but like it has happened and my brother's thrown people out of the restaurant here and when you get people in and they're just not respectful mm -hmm. and you go you need to leave yeah. and you go no it's because because you're not fulfilling your side of the contract and we forget about that in 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 the dining experience because so much is on the customer side and they're paying yeah. and of course but I still mean, they've come in yeah if you go into a hotel and you wreck the room well then like you're not a good guest or if yeah. you come in and you start acting and you're loud and you're obnoxious and sometimes we I suppose fine dining establishments attract those people mm -hmm. um, who have a who have a point to make, you know. And um, mm. um, but speaking of is that, uh, what about? Um, so I do write reviews, but the only reviews I ever write is when I have something nice to say. Mm. I, I, I'm I the same. Yeah. I, I, I once done it. It was recently where I went into a place. I was expecting loads, loads of friends, and I, I, I just felt. And I actually put the comment. Look, I know this is early in the restaurant. Yeah. But everything about it looked good, but everything about it, you know, it was all the airs and graces. It was almost mutton and dressed as lamb, like those tiny little crab burgers this size. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the, the bun was stale. Yeah. And it, it started from there and went to loads of different things. Now, I realise I'm a bit of an asshole even saying that I'm confident yeah. on the bun. But I suppose uh, more so what I want to ask is, say for people starting a restaurant, or, yeah, how... Or it's such a ruthless thing. You go into a place and I probably won't go back if it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, how, how, do you <coughs> how do you kind of, from the get-go, some people start in a restaurant and really they should not have been in a restaurant. They shouldn't have started a restaurant. What they liked was the idea of being in a restaurant yeah. as opposed to running it. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know? like, I mean, I could say the same for myself, um, that I enjoyed cooking and then I opened a restaurant. Do I enjoy running restaurants? I mean, I enjoy... Uh, to a certain degree, but there is there is a negative side of that because yeah. the more the more you get into running a restaurant, the less you can get in and just cook and pretend to ignore everything else and go. I'm mm -hmm. just going to cook here in this section and just going to uh, 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 ignore everything else because you just can't. You can't mm -hmm. turn off if there's something wrong with the lights or something wrong with the the table isn't the correct uh, manner. I mean, so yeah, so it is. I mean, certainly to, for um, for either younger chefs or younger restaurateurs. I mean, you really need to, um, I suppose. <coughs> Uh, give yourself time in a space and and um, uh, working whether as a chef or working um, in uh, in management to try and navigate towards like saying is this is this something I want to do yeah. and I probably didn't give myself that 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 space I like I was a chef and then we got a chance to open Cava and I opened Cava and we did it on the fly we did it with no experience of management no experience of um, of running a company and we just had to set all these things up and just learn on the complete fly yeah and I probably would like um, like recommend to, to probably take more time but saying that um, if there if yeah. there is um, 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 impetuous as I am then they probably just go no I don't want to I just want to learn I just want to go I want to go and and look that that's going to happen as well and mm. but certainly trying to keep things small and uh, trying to keep a space that's manageable mm. um, for for things that you want to um, uh, start off with is certainly something that, uh, that that you need to do yeah okay yeah you really need to figure out whether this is definitely the right industry for you because it is, I imagine, it's like any industry I suppose, but it does require an extra level to deliver every single day to high levels knowing that that customer is gone forever. It's not yeah. like you've got them on a direct debit and yeah. you can keep them for a long period of time. They're gone though. It's, it's a pressure. Yeah, no, yeah. no, absolutely. And um, it's, um, uh, it's, okay, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult thing and, and that, I suppose that's what makes it um, I suppose even even more difficult in an ear because the expectation levels are so much higher when yeah. people come in they go this is i'm going to have the best experience of my life or i'm yeah. going to have the best experience of the year or of the month or mm. uh, if they're eating all the time in missions and restaurants they're going to go is this as good as the last one oh, is it yeah, yeah. Oh, and so God. it's so as, as as one chef once said it's like the cup final every night you know you yeah. have to get ready and then uh, you have to set yourself up and then you, you can't make a mistake because if you make a mistake then then uh, you get mm. I suppose you get criticised and um, yeah mm. that's tough man that's the way it is uh, right? the, the last one is blatantly obvious but I have to ask you because obviously I'm putting the turkey in the oven next week have so you any tips can you give me just simple little things that I can do rub it with butter and uh, <laughs> you just put loads of butter like a bucket of butter a bucket of butter <laughs> on it and cook it about 160 for three hours I reckon it would be fine okay and loads of herbs 
butter and herbs. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah that's all. Nothing and else. tell me uh, any tricks with the uh, what type of herbs now? Just oh, rosemary and thyme. Rosemary and thyme. thyme yeah. not put them I mean, into put an orange up there. I would put a head of garlic. I think it'd be less exotic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 you're you're supposed to go for that Hawaiian flavour. Yeah, like pineapple up there if you wanted. But, yeah. Uh, um, and I think the general thing with the ham, people overcook it all the time. I, I would get a probe and bring your, bring your ham to the boil and then simmer it and then just bring it up to 65 degrees. Yeah. And then you're going to coat oh, Sorry. Yeah, then you can degrees. take it out at 65 degrees at the centre of the ham and okay. then take it out and you can do your glaze and then roast it in the oven. Okay, any tricks to the glaze now? You just need sh uh, sugar, honey. Boy, a bit of fruit. And I know there's there's tricks now. Come on, you have to give me a couple oh, of. What do, you mean, what do you mean, boil a bit of fruit? See, that's where you're kind of going. Bit of fruit. There's, it's not as simple as just a bit of fruit, like, is it? No, no. It's like I mean, to make to make it a nice, simple glaze, you can take honey, brown sugar, and a little bit of water, and bring bring it to the boil until it's kind of sticky and caramelized, and okay. then. But you can put like people put marmalade in, and people put all sorts of like orange rind and lemon zest and yeah. um, all sorts of um, mad things. But um, like I always think, keeping it as simple as possible. Okay. I mean, to to get a glaze, you need um, uh, sugar to caramelize that. Yeah. So and it, so honey is a nice form of, of sugar. And yeah. um, okay. So like putting putting honey on in its direct form is uh, is quite concentrated. So so. Heating the honey with a little bit of uh, a little bit of water, maybe a few juniper berries, and just okay. reducing it down till it's kind of a, of a paint consistency. Right. So rather than because honey is really thick and uh, viscous, you know. Yeah. So, but I think that's like um, okay. the easiest thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, people have mad things of like putting port in and an orange juice and orange zest, and they bring it down, reducing it. And, um, but at the end of the day, you just want to eat something really simple and and enjoy it. Yeah. And, um, okay, and then the potato. Oh, I like. I think just do it. Just do it one way. Just people go mental mad at um, That's Christmas. Uh, like, or make them. I think mash is nicer. Yeah, roast yeah. potatoes. Put them in, like, uh, parboil them and uh, peel them, and then just coat them with um, duck fat, and then just put okay. them into the oven and turn them. Right. And just like, don't pack them all in. If you pack them all in and they're all in a big heap, then they're not going to roast. Yeah, so okay. having them like nicely lined up. So the edges can get... Yeah, the yeah and then turn them. And then just, okay. I think just chill out. Like and if the you mash, what are you doing with the mash there now? Just because when you said mash? Oh, um, just as long as you have 50% butter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shite. Wait, I'm going to keep going here just for a second because yeah. that's gone. Fuck that. Uh, gravy. Oh, I, I'm, I'm not a gravy person. I, like, I just, yes, uh, for me to strain the... The juices that come out of the turkey is like that's that's for me that's the only gravy i need and if you put okay. a nice bit of fat on the the turkey that when that combines with the moisture if you strain that and blend it together you get a lovely okay. uh kind of buttery turkey sauce Butter. buttery turkey years sauce. years ago i went on the course um oh, for it was an indian restaurant it was the same guys who did the jaipur group mm. uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's he he's, when you open the place Sunil in town. open pickle yeah, yeah so yeah, Sunil yeah. get a and course. his brother won a Michelin star this year in London yeah I yeah, saw yeah. him tweeting something about I that know, they're all, I never <laughs> even knew he had so many brothers <laughs> in so many different places but yeah, on the course anyway he um, I, I saw him there and he put into the obviously Indian is about butter or I can't think of the name of the Indian yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, the ghee yeah, the called, ghee. yeah I should remember that word wait um, <laughs> sorry uh, but he was there with the butter and he puts in a mass amount of butter and uh, this woman looks at him and goes what uh, why are you putting in so much butter and he just goes happiness ma'am yeah 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 and that's, that that, that's pretty much it is like yeah. it does I, well, we do cooking classes here as well and um on monday evenings and i was we just finished one and i was asking people for like what what will you take away from it and nearly all of them said butter <laughs> and then and the second one was sea salt Okay, um, yeah. and then uh, cling film because you wrap things up <laughs> in butter and you season them, and then you wrap them and they hold their shape. Um, so uh, three Lovely. most important things: butter, uh -huh. sea salt, and cling film. Um, right, that's very very good. Yeah. So um, thank you very much. No, no, pleasure. really appreciate it. Cool, pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's put this on. Hi, if you like the conversation that I just had and you'd like more, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Frank. Hello, Frank, morning, man. <laughs>